be done with the talking part and jump right into the actual demonstration. So the format's going to be, we're going to tell you a little bit about what the problem that we think the, the user need is. We're going to tell you a little bit about what our proposed solution is, what the benefit is, and then we're going to jump right in and show you. And it sort of takes the form of a chronological tour through Architect. So from launch, where we'll show you um, application templates all the way through testing in, in, the, in the cloud. Um, Aaron and I are going to alternate. I think I'll do the first one here, which is application templates. So the user need, I think Aaron touched on this at the keynote, is, is for that when you're starting to use Architect. So the first time you see that blank screen and you don't know what to do. Uh, and when you combine that with the idea that for many people, their, their applications follow well-known design paradigms. So there are lots of unique needs that everybody has, but a lot of applications sort of start at the same point or, or have similar similarities that we can expose in Architect. So when we combine those, we came up with our list of project templates that we think um, solves that need for you, the, the guidance on the first run. And our solution, obviously, is application templates. And we think there are actually a few benefits of this to you. So there's the obvious, if you don't have to write the code, we write it for you, you'll be up and running a little bit faster. The clean code, so we think that we're providing you with templates that are actually showing good coding practices. And they'll also help you learn. So if, you, if you're unfamiliar with the architect you, and the frameworks, you, you, get up fat, you get up and running faster, you get good code, and it also helps you learn how to use architect. So now, I think we can jump over and start showing this. All right, so on the screen you can see I'm going to look at that screen and that screen at the same time. So this is the same uh, Sencha Architect that uh, is the preview build. It's available to you. Uh, at the end of the session, I'll talk a little bit about the 103 days remaining for trial. But there's nothing up my sleeve. This really is the build that you guys will be using. And to get to templates is really easy. When you create a new application, you'll see the template menu. And um, wow, the resolution is. So it's a, a little bit hard to see in this resolution, but we're now looking at um, the, touch, um, the touch templates. And I could also switch over here, and you could see the exe.js templates. As I scroll down, you can see we have a bunch of them. So the list of templates that we have right now is by no means final. We're trying to figure out the right balance of the number of them, the complexity. Uh, so we're, we're, we're definitely open to feedback on those. And we sort of try and group them in three main categories. Um, so basic layouts, looking here at EXE.js, um, are basically simple things um, that'll sort of just get you started out of the gate. So if you need a master detail view, for instance, you know, you could choose this one. And uh, I can preview it. And um, you can see that this is actually a live preview. So as I'm clicking on things, it's actually showing you what your code, what your project would look like. And if you want, you can switch between our pre-canned themes to see what it would look like in our different themes. So a couple of things about our um, about the template. So first, they're available for both frameworks, but currently only for the latest versions of the framework. So you can see I'm looking at EXEJS uh, 4.2 here. And now if I look at the touch ones, um, you can see that I'm looking at touch 2.2. And um, actually, that's the, the other thing is um, they, as I was explaining, they go in different layers of complexity. So the basic ones are fairly basic layouts. And then starter apps are sort of just example applications that'll give you, um, if you want to learn more about sort of good coding practices, you can just open one of these and get going. So why don't I pick one of these? Uh, let's just do the task list and actually create it. So Architect is now creating this project for me. Great. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. So if you're looking at, as you look in the project inspector here, you can see that the entire project has been created for me. Um, as Aaron was explaining before, in, since Architect 2.2, we don't actually automatically uh, open all your components. So as I click through them, you'll see them opening. So if I click on the view, you'll see here's my main view. You'll see a task list is created for me. Um, and my form panel, my store has been created for me, along with my model and any resources I need. So this uh, has basically done uh, 
all this code that you would have had to write yourself and all this layout that you would have write to say, had to do yourself has now been done for you directly. Um, and this is a fully functional app. If I saved it and previewed it, which I'm not going to show you right now, it would actually work just fine. Am I missing anything else about templates? No, I'm no, that's, that's it. it. All right. So let me switch us back to Keynote. So that's application templates. And now I'm going to go over to user extensions for Aaron. So next we're going to talk about user extensions. Um, and as you guys know, you guys are probably familiar with the ext.ux uh, namespace. There's lots of components out there. Basically, most of the UI controls that you need that are not yet in the framework, you can find out there on the web, so, or if you create your own. So what we wanted to do was enable users to put these extensions into Architect so that all the configurations for a particular user extension, all the events were available, and it actually rendered on the canvas. So the solution is what we call a .aux package, an Architect user extension. And these Architect user extension have a definition and the definition is basically what describes all of the classes in whatever library you're trying to encapsulate in this architect user extension. So it shows all of the configurations that are available, all the events, and then other things like what, uh, what's a valid parent? What's a valid child? So how does my component relate to other components that are in the framework or could also be other user extensions. So the benefits really that we get to use these user extensions that you've come to know and love in standard just coding other, other ways and we actually get first class citizen support. So in Architect 2.2 you can always change the create alias uh, but you're not going to get rendering inside of the canvas. So this is really about rendering inside the canvas and giving you a great experience. So let's take a look at um, a demo. And that's very challenging. Let's change this real quick. Yeah. Oh. Range. Range. Yeah, but it's over there. Yeah, this was. All right, that's going to be a lot easier. All right. Um, so here we have this uh, touch example. Let's let's go in and start a ext example. Actually, I'm going to start from a template. I want to show you a small user extension that our team created, which allows you to drag and drop regions in a border layout. So how many times have you wanted to be able to drag in between, say, the left region and drag it over to the right or something like that? That's what this component does. So if we install this drag drop plugin, You'll see now we have one extension. Come down here. I drag that into left, and I'll drag it into right. So you'll see that the left and right regions have now been activated to take part in drag drop. And we'll also see down here all of the configurations that are available for this component. So things like a label while we're dragging, whether it's draggable, droppable, um, what CSS class we want to use, as well as groups. So you might want to have groups for the left and right or groups for the top and bottom. But let's, let's take a look at this in the, the browser. Um, DD demo. So we're going to come to preview it. Max 
maximize. So I'm clicking, dragging on the left, come over here to the right, drop, and we see it's swapped regions. So this is just a small example of a simple plugin that someone might want to integrate inside of Architect. Uh, the next user extension that I'd like to show is something we saw this morning in the keynote as well, which is the touch grid. So touch grid is part of the Cincha Touch bundle, and it's installable via extension. And we'll go ahead and install touch grid. And we'll see here, let's switch this to iPad since it's a tablet. Go into grids, and we could drag out the touch grid. So here we have the touch grid running. Well, let's see, that way. So here we have the touch grid running inside of Architect. And if we switch over to the code, as Jamie said, you'll see that the API syntax is very similar to ext. But with Architect, you really just drag it out. And if it's a valid child, then it knows where to put it. So we'll see if we drag out a column, put it on the grid, it added that. We can also drag out a grid header and put, we'll put two columns in there. So maybe the header group could be called name, and then we could have text for first and last. All right, um, so this is the touch grid. All of these uh, architect user extensions, AUX files, are available on the forum. There's a new Architect 3 forum that you, we're going to send out the link. Uh, you actually already got it inside of an email. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it. But those Architect user extensions you can download and install into Architect and take a look at. The final uh, UX that I wanted to show is to show the improved BlackBerry support. So as you guys know, we've added a bunch of stuff for BlackBerry. And these are components that inside of a BlackBerry app just feels much more natural. And I have a demo project that uses a few of these extensions. And so we'll see here that we, there's a tab menu button and a overflow menu button. And if we launch this, you don't have touch down on the drink. All right, so we we can't look at it right now. Um, let's see. Yes, actually, we, we probably can. There we go. All right. So it, if we launch this, we'll see that we have a BlackBerry look and feel, and we also have the same functionality that you would expect if you were using a BlackBerry 10 device. Um, we can go to add, we can search, et cetera. Alex Saunders this morning announced a BlackBerry contest, uh, which I'm not sure everybody got the details on, but there's a contest right now for BlackBerry apps that if you develop a application with Architect and submit it to the BlackBerry App Store, they will give you a free dev device, a Z10, and also a free license to Architect if your application is accepted. So great deal, and uh, I'd encourage you guys to take a look at that. 
So the final thing I want to do for to take a look at the user extensions is take a look at one of these definitions and what it looks like. So first, we have a new uh, a new way to generate one of these packages with Sensha command, but this is what is known as a definition. And you'll see here that we have the class ali alias. So this is the P type for this particular plugin, but could be an X type. Uh, the class name, what it inherits from, what its valid parent is. So you notice as I dragged out that plugin, it would go inside of any panel. But if I set, tried to put the drag drop version plugin in, say, drag it out to a text field or a button, Architect would not allow us. It also says what groups they're in, uh, its name, icon, and then it has all the configurations. So we have tooling that we're working on to generate these definitions from your source code if it's properly documented with JSDuck. So all these definitions inside of our framework, we actually generate them off of the source code and use that so that it's uh, in sync with whatever library we're using. So uh, as you see here, we have a handful of configs, drag, drop, group, notify. And if we come up and let me open that project again. And I'm going to go to one of these plugins. We'll see drag, drop, drag label, frame color, and all of these configurations here. If you have a deeply nested hierarchy, it'll also pick up its parent that it inherits from. So at the top here, where it inherits from abstract plugin, any configurations that come from abstract plugin are going to be here. So here you see that there's only one, and it's plugin ID. But it, it works just like inheritance does and ext define and extend. Um, so inside this architect folder is where your definitions are. The other two really important things are the source. So source folder is actually what the, the source for the plugin or the user extension looks like. And this is what you guys are accustomed to if you're doing typical EXTJS or Central Touch development. You download a user extension, and it looks something like this. You link it in, and then you start using it. So this would be where all of your, your source files go. And then also, if you download a user extension, it's going to have a bunch of CSS and resources and imagery. And so you put these inside of the source and resources directories, and those are automatically injected into the canvas when at design time, as well as the saved application. Um, so th this is our, our vision for architect is always that you should be able to do everything that you could do in the library in a text editor. And this is just getting us one step closer. We think that in the future, the marketplace is going to have almost all of the user extensions are going to say, like, architect compatible. And then you'll be able to install them and use them inside of architect. That's our hope. Um, all right, so Gil, you want to go over, I think, uh, theming? Absolutely. So just one last point about um, extensions. So obviously, like we were saying, the advantage to the end user is that they get uh, to bring these user extensions into Architect. And the advantage to the developer is they can finally access the Architect market. And also for organizations, they'll actually get to, if they want, if you want to enforce a certain style, certain code, anything you want, you can package it up as an extension and then have it used within your organization. Um, and also the touch. Uh, user extensions that um, Aaron was showing are available only for the Touch 2.3 beta support in Architect 3 at the moment. So 
just something to keep in mind when you're using those.